Good morning, my creative friends. Dr. Minette Riordan here. This is Painting in Your PJs live with Minette. I am in my PJs and a cozy fleece because it's 31 degrees and snowing here in Loveland, Colorado today. My husband always says it looks like we're in a snow globe. It looks really pretty upstairs. My hair's a little wild and we had an absolutely lovely Thanksgiving day yesterday. I hope that you did too, whether it was Thanksgiving or just uh, a day of the year for you. I hope you had a lovely day and that you're looking ahead to the rest of a wonderful day today. And all month long, I've been working in a gratitude art journal. I'm really loving this process. And it's such a great fit for what I believe about art and creativity. And what I try to show here on Painting in Your PJs is all about art as creative practice, art as creative process. It's a powerful tool for self-discovery. I think it's the most powerful tool for self-discovery. I find that so often we tend to really overthink things, to spend so much of our time spinning, getting caught in, a, in overwhelm, trying to figure things out in a linear way. And when it comes to things like identity and purpose or challenge and feeling stuck, Good morning, beautiful. Happy day after Thanksgiving to you too as well, Tori. I decided to come in and do part two of what I started yesterday, so I'm happy to be here live as well. And I find that creative tools like writing and art making help us bypass that overwhelming thought making process we tend to get stuck in and go directly to the heart of the matter in a different way. And mandalas, or what we affectionately call sacred circles, are one of my favorite ways to do that. So I started one yesterday. So if you haven't watched watched part one of the video, then or this process, then I'm going to invite you to go back and do that because I decided to marry my two loves of mixed media art journaling and zen tangling on a sacred circle. And I'm going to go ahead and switch my camera here and I'm so pleased. I have two more little triangles to finish up here, but I'm really pleased with how this is coming along. Got a nice fresh hot cup of coffee at hand and um, a Zentangle, a beginner Zentangle tile from, I think it was from a class I just recorded. So uh, for the first time ever, I have recorded an introduction to Zentangle class, kind of a Zentangle 101. This is the tile I created and this class will be available next week when we release our end of year holiday bundle, which I am so excited about. Thank you, Tori. I am so pleased with how this one is coming along. We got some funny, funny, hey, good morning from that. It is a snowy, winty, wintry wonderland, but I'm glad it held off just a little bit so my parents were able to get down the mountain from Estes Park and back up again without uh, any challenges. So I'm going to finish these two triangles here. So I started by making this lovely mixed media page. I printed this out on vellum so I have a little bit of transparency here. And as I started to add the Zentangle patterns and figure out where I wanted to go next, you can tell that the patterns here are busier and they got simpler as I went to the edges because I want there to be some transition between this white, white paper and this sacred circle background. And I'm gonna do that using colored pencils. So I went and those are Tombos, not colored pencils. So I went and grabbed my bucket of, these are the Faber-Castell colored pencils, but I don't know that I have all the colors I want, so don't laugh, but I have a huge, huge box of Prismacolors, um, a giant box of Prismacolors from different workshops I've taken. The, the, I've had these since college. My mom gave me some, and then she gave me some more, and uh, I've got all kinds of stuff left in here from a class I was teaching, but I have quite the collection here of Prismacolors, and I have not unpacked this box. I taught uh, a really fun in-person class a month or so ago up in Estes Park. Let's get rid of those paint brushes so we can actually see. So I want to start to pull out some colors, and what I notice in my 
in my set of the fabric castells are there there aren't that many purples and so i'm often digging in here that's a crayola one for some purples so i'm just going to dig around here for a minute and pull out some colors i'm looking for that dark green i don't if i have to find a pencil sharpener also did everyone have a good Thanksgiving? So ours ended up being so lovely. I cooked a lot of Indian food. I made four different dishes and then my son and his boyfriend each made a dish and my mom brought over homemade peach pie. And we just had a lovely, lovely long visit. I think that's what I love about Thanksgiving. You know, you don't have all the, the mess of, of, you know, Christmas gifts. And so it was a lovely time to just sit and chat. One of our longtime family friends was here as well. Oh, maybe some of that really dark blue. I have a lot of repeat colors in here as well. So I probably already pulled out some... Uh, like multiple shades of the same green but there's something to be said about taking the time ahead of time before you start coloring to pull out your pencils and get them ready i don't know what happened here this one got sharpened on both ends that's hilarious and um definitely don't need that pink there and what i feel like i'm missing is maybe a nice so sort of a darker violet it's because they're in the other bucket over here. And look at how different. These are both called violet, but the one from Prismacolor is much more blue. And the one from, well, this one's actually called mauve. Um, and this one's much more red. So I'm also kind of noticing some of the differences in some of the colors. And I'm probably going to do some swatching here and test some of these colors before I start adding them to my page. But first I got to finish up these last two little places of pattern. Oh, that's lovely, Tori. So you went to your sister's yesterday and then you're going to your daughter's tomorrow. So just lots of family celebration and together time. Wonderful, wonderful. So I'm going to finish up these last two little spaces here. Julie, did you and Mark enjoy your nice quiet day and find some good Indian food yesterday? You always know the best local restaurants. I was really pleased with how our food came out yesterday. It was delicious. We kind of made little bits of everything, which is good and bad, because we could have had a lot, a uh, lot more leftovers. But yesterday was vegan Indian food, and so today I am making a chipotle maple glazed turkey. And if the snow clears up over the weekend, I'll take some up to my parents. But today, Brad and I are going to be snowed in putting together some new Ikea furniture that um, we ordered last week. I'm super excited. We're finally getting some nice living room furniture that feels like it's going to fit our new living room. New from a year ago. We finally found some things that we liked. And it's supposed to get delivered today. We'll see if they decide it's too snowy or not, but. We do too, like we still have Brad's bookcase from one of his first uh, apartments ever. We have a few different Ikea things. We have an Ikea futon upstairs in the guest room that's super comfy and cozy <laughs> i love mark loves to eat so we did, do find good restaurants we decided to walk instead of pedal yeah walking 10 miles that's amazing where did you walk to to eat that's a nice long walk 
Brad and I got out for a walk yesterday morning, but that that's not long. I do love good long walks, especially when you're going to go eat a ton of Indian food. All right. I don't know why this vellum is so shiny, but it seems like that's a better spot over there. Try to get this out of the shine just a little bit. Sherpa grill on Elizabeth. Lovely. All right. I'm going to put aside some of this other stuff now that I have picked out my pencils. I'm done with my drawing. I didn't color everything. Like I said, I wanted to be able to keep some of this really, really simple. And I don't know about you guys, but if I get too much stuff on my table and it gets too cluttered, I kind of can't focus. And so I got to just clean up here a little bit, make a little space. And I am going to, nope, that's not the one. I'm going to move my picture up to the top of the screen up there. There, that's better. Okay. Now I can get my artwork over here where it's not as glary on this side of the table. Don't ask me why, but that seemed to work. All right. So, yeah, I'm really feeling like um, this. I want to swatch my colors and kind of get a sense of what's going to work. I'm like, do I want to swatch them? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I've got this little piece of paper that I was blotting with yesterday. And I'm going to swatch on this piece of paper because then I can kind of, hold it up so I can tell already that's going to be too blue and the color I missed in here was a nice uh, kind of burnt sienna color we had a little bit of that sienna in the background so we're going to want to pull in just I think a little bit of that one this one I can tell already might be a little too pink but there's maybe some little pops of pink so that one's a maybe too grassy green. So just by swatching these, yes, the lavender, just by swatching these out, I can quickly see what's going to match. Really love this gorgeous bright green here that's going to brighten things up. That's going to be too grassy. There's a nice dark purple. Interesting. So the wood on these, the, the colors actually look very different, but uh, the colors ended up being very much the same. So you can't always tell, right? Oh, they are the same. Those are both violet. Where'd that other one go? Oh, it was this one that looks similar, but it's a little more blue. This one's a little more red, but it looks the opposite from the wood. So it's so important to swatch your colors to kind of figure out and I'm looking for these more olivey greens, right? This is this is a light olive green in the background. That's almost exactly that same color there. It's going to help me come in and really sort of blend the edges of things so that paper starts to disappear. That's kind of the goal here is to get the paper to disappear. That's going to be too green. I don't know that I need another purple. That one's pretty similar. So you can see how fast I go through and discard them and again I think it's important to just take the time I don't know I might want to pop of that blue and nope don't know what that is okay and I have enough greens so all of these go back or these are all Prismacolors nope one I keep my Faber-Castell and my Prismacolors mostly separated they're they're very different if you like working with colored pencils, it's uh, fun to explore. One of the things that I love about Prismacolor is how waxy they are and they're very blendable and they're really frustrating to sharpen because they break all of the time. And so I feel like I lose so much pencil. The Faber-Castell art pencils are much easier to sharpen and they that one of them is oil based the fabric castell are oil based and the prismacolor are wax based so they just do different things and um i have really enjoyed playing with them and i've always been a prismacolor advocate and then when i got introduced to the fabric castell 
I find those are what I turn to most when I am coloring my sacred circle designs. So I'm going to come in and I want to just get some of this base color down. I picked this color because it is so similar to the background color and already it's starting to get that little bit of a, a blend in there. And if I pull that color and thicken it across the edge, we're going to see if we can move that even more. There's a little pop of purple that ended up being kind of a bright pink there. So I'm wondering what would happen if we came in and added some color in the background. So this is really that play and experimentation part. And I'm looking at that going, wow, that's really pink. So I'm just going to blend things right on the page and darken that pink up, those two together. So what is this one is gorgeous. This is, uh, it's called Process Red. Um, but to me, it's a, a beautiful pink. And then this is the Faber-Castell mauve. And those two together create a really lovely color. And I'm just going to work my way around the page. The other tip to working with colored pencils, and I remember learning this at a Tangle You event a few years ago, is it's essential to keep your tips really sharp especially when we're doing fine work like on a design like this, a sacred circle design. That keeping your pencils really sharp makes a big difference. This one is not super sharp, but I'm just kind of covering in big areas right now and laying down that color pretty fast, not pressing too hard. Next time I did this, I might try printing on tracing paper. I would have um, liked to have had a little more transparency or maybe even on some deli paper. I've been wanting to have a, a gel printing day lately too and I am out of deli paper. And it's my favorite thing to gel print on because of the, the transparency. Thank you, Tori. Yeah, I'm happy to, to answer questions. There's so many different art supplies out there. And what I recommend before, you know, you go buy a giant set or even a set of 12 is go to an art store. Most art stores, either online or in person, will sell um, singles of colors and get a few colors. That's what I did with the Faber-Castell. I started, I just bought a few colors Actually, I was with uh, Maggie when we were taking her, gosh, it's four years ago already. She's a senior this year. When we first took her to the University of Oregon, and, and which are the ducks, and we went to the duck store, and they have an amazing art supply section in the basement at the duck store. And uh, I bought a handful of colors, like very similar to these colors, to play with. And so once I discovered how much I actually liked the Faber-Castell pencils, then I went and bought, you know, like a box of 48. So both the Prismacolors and the Faber-Castells are a pricier colored pencil. People are really liking the Arteza brand of products. I have not um, tried any of the Arteza brand. They are a very affordable brand, but they're supposed to be nice quality. So again, I recommend trying out different things, right? For me, art supplies are an investment and I will spend money on the things that I know that I'm going to use a lot of. All right, so I don't know what I'm going to do in the center here, but I liked the way that this sort of helped it blend together and yet still have that little bit of an edge. So I think in a few places here, I'm gonna come around. I really like this white patch, so I don't want, good morning, Yvonne. How was your Thanksgiving yesterday? Um, I don't wanna cover up all, you know, the background because I really like the background. But in a few places, I want to bring in 
just a few more of these pops of color, blend them together. I don't want my sacred circle to disappear. Of course, I want it to stand out. But what I didn't want was such a hard line between the sacred circle and the painty background. But I'm kind of liking having this little bit of a darker edge. And just as a reminder, our Sacred Circles membership is on sale through the end of the year. Um, you know, when you go, Julie, to a delicatessen or a barbecue place or you go to get a muffin at the grocery store and they always have the box of those um, kind of waxy papers that you use the waxy paper to wrap products in, it's actually paper from a deli and you can buy it in big boxes, small boxes, and uh, deli paper is different than wax paper. It's not as waxy and it's very sheer and it is a great tool to have in your um, art supply stuff if you like doing mixed media things. It's especially great for making collage papers and background papers, but it literally is exactly what it says it is. It's that sheer paper that they wrap sandwiches in or that you would grab one in the grocery store and uh, grab a donut or a muffin out of the case. So really deli paper. Um, you can sometimes use it in the, the printer. One of the ways to use it in the printer, that's a great question, depending on the size of the paper. Sometimes with either deli paper or fabric or other things that are unusual for the printer, if you use a little bit of um, scotch tape to, and you got to be really mindful it doesn't all get jammed up in your, your printer or a little bit of double stick tape on the back of the paper. Sometimes if you stick it to another piece of paper, it goes through easier. Depends on your printer. So mine seems to be pretty happy taking a variety of things, but I don't think that I've actually tried deli paper. So I'm just going to use my pencils and move some color around a little bit into the background. Just add a little bit more richness and depth and layers to things. Again, the goal here is to incorporate the sacred circle design. My pleasure. And these are all things I've learned from other people along the way, most of them from my friend Andrea. And I love to pass them on. So my Black Friday purchase this morning, I really like the artist uh, Tiffany Smith. And she had a class on making circle shaped journals and I'm so excited to try making a, a circle shaped journal. Really really looking forward to that so I think it's going to be um, super super fun to make something in a circle shape. Can't wait to play with that. So I love this super, super bright green. So I'm just adding in some of that bright in some of these places. And I love the colored pencil over the top of the acrylics and especially over the top of the gesso. You can get some really interesting effects happening here. So I'm kind of loving the way it's starting to get incorporated into the page. And I always love hearing about other supplies as well. So um, if you have a brand of colored pencils that you love, so the Prismacolor and Faber-Castell tend to be the two most famous, but by you know no means a Karin de Ash who makes Neocolor, they make colored pencils as well. So if you have a favorite, I'm all ears. I love trying and testing new things. And there is a woman, and I'm going to forget her name right now. Um, she's on YouTube and super active on Instagram, and she always is testing different kinds of 
colored pencils she created this amazing color cube as well that's this really fun tool for using for swatching colors all right i'm going to get just a little bit more depth of color up here in the top i want to pull so one of the things yesterday that was bugging me was it was so purple on one end and so green on the other end and so one of the things I want to do is to move that color around a little bit so I have the greens and the purples have a little bit better flow and this was also a tip I learned a long time ago when I'm working with colored pencils and especially with a specific palette like this is and I'm left-handed so I'm holding all of my pencils in my right hand and it speeds up your process they're not rolling away on the table um, yes with with colored pens in fact I was reminding my husband um, they gave me this plain white box from Michaels with some colored microns when I first started tangling so almost 15 years ago and um, so yes you can absolutely tangle with pen in my new tree of life class I'm going to show you how to tangle with watercolor um, I do it with colored pencils with Derwent ink tents so I can show you in here that's a great idea Julie how I would use pencil the colored pencils to add some pattern and to create color on color designs which would be like is a really fun thing for me I love creating color on color designs oh my gosh I love that you took the the tablecloth yes I know um, paper tablecloths paper napkins are amazing for all of that um, I love it it must have been a pretty clean tablecloth to have enough pieces left I was so happy I got a new tablecloth to go with my stepmom's china that I had inherited and um, it was white with blue stripes kind of like a pretty farmhouse style was really happy with it and then I thought what am I doing using a white tablecloth when I'm serving Indian food that's full of turmeric and turmeric stains everything and surprisingly it came out really clean I was so happy to um, note that we did not get the new tablecloth covered in turmeric I grew up in a family where we always had cloth tablecloth and cloth napkins we never used paper napkins except for picnics and so that is a habit I have sustained across time so I will be washing napkins and tablecloth today again I love the texture of the colored pencil it just layers really nicely over the top of that gesso you can get a completely different look so I think that's you know one of the things about mixed media that I love so much is the the mixability of tools I was watching someone else's video this morning and she was starting her page with chalk pastel and mixing chalk pastel with gesso and uh, creating some really cool background effects and so just think about some of the the different ways that you can look at the tools that you do have on hand Which reminds me, Julie, I want to um, check and see if our Jerry's Artorama is having a, a Black Friday sale because this is a good time to stock up on some of those supplies. And it's such a wonderful little store, local store, and I love supporting them. So already this is making me happier because I feel like the colors are now more integrated than they were to start. I've got just some little touches of purple up at the top a little bit of that sienna up there I pulled a little more green so it doesn't feel like the page is like half and half right that was bugging me it didn't feel 
integrated. So now I really like the background and I can focus on adding color to my sacred circle design. And I have a couple of options here. So I'm curious what it might look like if I left the black and white, black and white, and only added color to the spaces between where there's no line drawing added. So I'm thinking I'm going to try that. Yeah, it does, right? It just needed that little bit of extra. And I could have done it with paint. And it was really fun to do it with the colored pencils because they go on, they just layer really nicely over the top of all of the other um, of the acrylics. And I'm kind of thinking I want to just see what's going to happen. If I just put some little pops of blue in a few different places to give us a little bit of depth. And it's in the same family as the purple, so it's I don't feel like I'm, you know, going off the ranch with something completely different. So now it looks like we have the bottom edge here a little more shading. All right, that's feeling pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna see what happens and who knows, I may end up coloring the entire sacred circle, but I'm gonna start by coloring the negative spaces and see where we get to. And I'm gonna start with this lightest green and then I can work my way up to some darker colors or some contrasting colors. Just being a little more mindful when we start to get down into the detail work, you'll notice this is where that extra sharp pencil makes a big difference to get around in between things. Oh, that's the blue. Where did my, I wanted the dark green. All right, well, I'm going to stick with the blue here for a minute because I started putting it in there. It's interesting because the, this um, indigo blue over the top of the lime green creates a beautiful grass green, right? And uh, all of my greens are kind of, I'm going to zoom in so we can all see this a little bit better. Um, and I'm not going for that grassy green. I want the olivey green. So I need to just remember what's going to mix with what. And I have a combination um, do I or I have? Yeah, these are all Prisma colors. I only have that one Faber Castell. I don't tend to mix them again because one is wax based and one is oil based. The Prisma colors are waxy. Um, and so they don't necessarily play great together. And as soon as I zoomed in, that got a little blurry there. That looks a little bit better. And so I don't tend to, to mix them very often. So just notice when you're on the hunt for new pencils or new supplies that make sure you, you get things that play together or you understand the differences. One of the things that I loved when I bought the box of Faber-Castell was it came with just this really simple little insert that showed all the different kinds of marks and ways that you could use the colored pencils and how to create different textures and surfaces. And so when I first got the box, you know, I spent a day or so just playing with the pencils on a blank page in my journal to, in order to get that uh, sense of what it is that the pencils will do. And that's so true for any supply is that you make sure that you give yourself time to play and it's not wasteful. I hear so many people say, oh, I can't possibly use my good supplies on this or that. Well, if you don't use them 
and learn how to use them, you never will, or you'll be disappointed in the results. And so to me, it's really essential that you take time to learn what your supplies do. And these pencils last forever. So I bought the box of Faber-Castell's and I use them two or three times a week to color sacred circles with. Um, I was out here helping Connor move into his first apartment or out of his first apartment and I, I went shopping and, and treated myself and uh, to these new pencils. So they're, I don't know, he's been out of university so they're probably three or four years old. I have some that are really stubby that I use all of the time. All right, so I'm liking the way the colors kind of coming together and I can kind of just stay mindful of the overall color, but it's interesting to see the patterns stand out from the space and um, decide where to put color, right? Where do I want to put the color? So I definitely want to get a little more of this burnt sienna in here. So I'm coloring over the top of matte medium. And it's funny because I was listening to a couple other art videos this morning. I love watching other people's art videos, even if I never make the projects themselves. I love watching other people's techniques. And someone else was talking about how matte medium just creates tooth on the page that makes it easier to come in and draw and add color over the, the top of things. And so I'm blending and mixing the colors as I go very much in the same way that I did around the edges because I want it to have that same grungy look. So again, what I'm looking for here is cohesiveness. And I noticed that I missed one black line. So that's the other fun thing about coloring. I can see where I missed a line. Another thing about the, the colored pencils, focus on that line there for a second, is that with the uh, microns, it's easier to draw first, then add the colored pencil if you're using the waxy Prisma colors. I find it's a little bit easier to draw over the top of the oil-based Faber-Castells, but in most cases I still prefer to draw first and then color. And sometimes that means that my black lines are getting pushed back to the, the background and some sometimes I have to go over them again and bring them back. I don't mind the extra effort, right? I don't mind that extra effort. This is why I hold my pencils because otherwise they roll all over the table. So I'm just continuing to use this same bright green as my base color. You can tell I'm focused when I get quiet. All right, let my coffee get cold as usual. And I'm not trying to color in every space, right? Because I have this nice transparency, there's always already some color there. I also know I'm probably gonna add some layers and some shading in here. So I'm just getting a base color down so I can see where the color is gonna go and then I can come back. So already you can see how just adding that little bit of color 
is tying it in with the background. It doesn't feel separate from the the piece. And uh, I know a lot of times when we're we have a fun practice like my sacred circle practice and people say, well, what do you do with all of your sacred circle designs? Well, this is an idea of what I do with them, right? I incorporate them, I cut them up, tear them up, use them as collage fodder, or in this case, I incorporate it into my practice of mixed media art journaling. And as always, I wanna say thank you to those of you that are here live with me. So appreciate those of you that stop by to play with me live. If you're stopping by for the first time, type replay in the comments and let me know that you stopped by. Say hello, thank you so much. So I have just such deep appreciation when people come and watch my crazy ramblings. I had one of my friends uh, who's a, a student and a, a regular say, you're like the only person that I enjoy listening to ramble stream of consciousness. And I'm like, well, that was a high compliment. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And my goal on painting in your PJs is just to share my process. It's not to teach you step-by-step -step art making, but to give you ideas to show you how to get your own creative practice just going to get it started. This is one of those pages in my journal where I'm gonna have fun flipping back through this journal and looking at this page. And I look at this and think, oh, this is uh, p potentially a fun class all of its own, or this concept is, you know, what could I do with this idea? So a lot of this journal play really ends up serving me in so many different ways. And this is showing up a little more brown than I want. So I'm gonna see if I can just change the color. So one pencil that I didn't pull out is a white, but what I love about the Prismacolor white pencils is they make fabulous blenders, much better than the Faber-Castell. And so if I'm getting something that is feels like it's too dark or I want those colors to blend a little bit, I can come in here with that white pencil. You probably can't see that very well on the screen, but I can see it on my end. So a white Prismacolor is a fabulous tool for blending. Like I can just kind of come in around the edges of that burnt sienna and blend it a little bit more with that green and we lose some of the hard edges of things, right? It just sort of softens everything up. And I know it's time to fix the, the focus on the camera. So when I come in close, it doesn't want to focus very well. At least it looks blurry on my end. So I don't know if I've ever done one like this. And so maybe the jury's still out a little bit where I'm coloring the spaces between the tangled pieces and I can always change my mind and choose to, to color the, the whole thing. But I'm gonna continue to play with it. And I'm thinking about what Julie was saying earlier about tangling with the, with the colored pencil. And I, I would want that to be subtle Hi, Georgia. You want to come say hi? I was just wondering where the cats were. They've been down here all morning. I'm sure they've been sitting upstairs watching the snow outside. They definitely go a little bonkers when it starts to snow. I'm sure they wish they could be out there in that snow. Not. They're so spoiled. Okay, I'm liking this more olive green better than that limey green. It feels a little bit warmer.
And with colored pencils, like with watercolor, you start with your lights and build up. It can be hard to add light over the top. So you want to start with your lights and add your darks. And be patient. Take your time building up the layers. OK, I'm really wanting to get, I think, some more purple in here, not as much of that pinky color. Interesting. So I, I had one where I put the um, circles in the wrong place. I didn't notice. I'm sure no one else will notice too. So this one is going to be different than the others. But let's get some color in these triangles. Yes, Georgia, you're so helpful. And it changes every time you start to add a little bit of color here, a little bit of color there. You can see how it starts to pull everything together. And I also haven't added any shading to my Zentangle patterns and my mark making. And I think maybe that's also one of the things that's um, bugging me right now is they look really stark and I'm feeling like they need some shading to integrate them. And I don't have to shade with black. I can come in and shade with color. And I can always shade with graphite and add color over the top of graphite. But just adding that little bit of shading there, that feels better. It doesn't feel so separate. So now I know exactly where I'm going to go. And I think this is... Uh, a piece that I'm gonna yeah I know it makes a huge difference and so this is one of those pieces that's probably gonna get carted upstairs to finish off while I lounge around not doing much of anything and maybe watching some movies on TV this afternoon this morning I'm going to start recording my newest class We took our Tree of Life art retreat and we're turning it into an online class and uh, this weekend and it's going to uh, open later this week. It's not ready yet, but um, I'm super excited to get all the videos recorded for that this weekend and create yet another Tree of Life. They make me so happy to create. Okay, so I'm loving this color combo. I'm loving where this is going. And this would also be a great color for adding some shading, right? So if I'm just gonna come around and add a little bit of shading in a few different places, and I can vary the colors that I use for the shading. They don't all have to be the same. I'll put a little pop of that bright blue in there but I'm liking that dark violet purple best I think for the shading and what's fun about a piece like this is well let me say it's fun and challenging sometimes it's hard to decide when it's done Right, and I mean, it's done when you say it's done. Here comes George's little ears. But I can see me having a lot of fun just continuing to build up the layers of color and taking my time to go into all the little nooks and crannies. So look at the difference between this one with that little bit of purple and the ones beside it that don't have that little bit of extra in there, you can see. It's all good, Tori. It, um, it's going to be an evergreen class, not a, a live class. And uh, so it'll be for sale forever. Um, so you can absolutely 
look at that whenever it works with your schedule. All right, so what would I do to do a little bit of color on color? Georgia, you're sitting on my microphone. Um, color on color tangling like Julie asked about. So I, what I'm thinking is that I'm going to take where I've got this olive green color. This is a funny peeper. And then I just want to start building up some really subtle patterns, like maybe spirals or orbs. And I love the sort of color on color subtlety of that. You can tangle just directly with your colored pencils, absolutely. And you would need that tip to be super, super sharp. You would need that tip to be super, super sharp to add those tangles. When you do the color on color, you just get this really interesting effect. And this is the, the process that I'm teaching in the Tree of Life course is this um, color on color tangling, but I'm doing it all with watercolor paint. So I'm looking at this section in here and I'm just going to come in and add some texture with those spirals over the top of those greens. So you can see it's really, really subtle. Let's see if we can zoom that in just a little bit. So it's super, super subtle and it just creates this really, really lovely, lovely pattern in the background. And that's even hard to, to see on the screen put a little more pressure there. See if we can, oops, I broke that tip because I put too much pressure. And I saw a pencil sharpener somewhere. There it is. So don't press as hard as I did and break your pencil tips. Prismacolor makes their own pencil sharpeners, which, see, this is what I don't like about Prismacolors is they're hard to sharpen. Um, they make their own pencil sharpeners that tend to work best. George is knocking things off the table with her tail. Um, see, this is what I mean by Prismacolors that I find eminently frustrating. So let's see, let's try one of the Faber-Castell ones. The lead in them is very, very soft. Yes, I know, you're so helpful. Okay, we have a little bit of a challenge happening over here. And because this one is oil based, it also has a little bit harder tip. And so what I'm seeing is it's going on a little bit better, more smoothly. It's not blending into that waxy Prismacolor underneath. So that pattern's actually standing out a little bit more. So I do love that color on color technique. So that's another thing that I would do here to add some more color. And I'm thinking I'm just gonna bring in a little more color in a few places, almost as if it's shading. And I'm gonna be mindful again of how the different types of pencils blend together, right? So this one, it's a little bit darker green, not quite as olivey there, a little bit grassier green, but it works. That layered on layered effect there. And wherever I use a color in one place on a design, I want to make sure I always use that color in another place as well. When you use the same color in multiple places on a design, it allows your eyes to flow around the design. Now, if I wanted there to be a place in this design where the viewer's eye was drawn just to that place in the design, I might put a big blob of yellow or neon orange or something if I wanted to draw people's eye to a part of the design, but that's not what I'm going for here. I'm going for a cohesive overall design. 
Yes, you're really not helping. Georgia says good morning to everyone. You are a goofball. You are a goofball. I know. I swear she knows that you guys are all watching and she's just showing off for you. And I'm adding a little bit of this green. I'm not completely covering up. everything but just continuing to layer on the color again noticing how this wax or this oil based pencil doesn't blend as nicely over the wax right so mindful of that so I'll probably come back with a Prismacolor again that's my pencil not yours and hey nope smoosh that in and I know you're wondering why don't you just toss Georgia off the table because she will be right back like four times until she finally gets it she was such a ham last night at Thanksgiving normally she's my shy one but she totally made the rounds last night of just lap to lap to lap Okay, it's starting to come together. Yeah, she's loved and she's also, uh, they're spoiled for sure, my sweet babies. Okay, let's zoom back out. So you can see how far I got in an hour and that gives you an idea of how much time is gonna go into a piece like this one. And just to be patient, I don't need to finish this in one sitting but I'm going to enjoy the, the opportunity. I have my, you know, little set of pencils. It makes this easy to travel with um, upstairs and to spend some really fun time just getting into the, the details of this. And I will um, post a, a picture of the finished version here on YouTube and on my Instagram once it's finished still wanting maybe a little more shading and this is where again I get to have fun just going 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 I love speaking with you and spending time with you too Tori and I'm hoping you're going to come back to Estes next summer and uh, we'll get to spend some time in person up there as well so it's coming along it's got a long way to go and I am going to have a lot of fun finishing this one up and I will see you guys all next week. I will be back Tuesday morning at 7 a.m. Mountain Time for I've got a couple of more gratitude prompts for next week and um, I've already picked them out. I don't know what the projects are going to be, but through the end of the month of November, I'm going to continue with this gratitude art journal. And while Brad and I were in Salida last week, I had uh, some fun. I had very limited supplies. So this was one of the, the Zentangle projects that I did while I was gone. This is just um, a black pen and a gold gel pen and a pencil was all it took to create something like this. So remember, you don't always need a lot of supplies, that what you need is the gift of time to yourself to just do some mindful coloring. And if you want help and support, consider come and joining us in our Sacred Circles membership. It's on sale right now for $99 for a full year of membership. That's a savings of, um, I think, like $68 or something. So enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of the long weekend and I will see you guys all next week and we'll have some finished pictures of our mindful mandala. Thank you so much for joining me. Pleasure as always to be with you live. Thank you for watching the recording. Remember to hit that like button. Let other people know that you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys all soon. Bye everybody.